Okay, can you hear this? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair McLeese. I know you're going to head back to Cambridge. Can we give him a warm stand to all the rest of you? Can we come here, please? Are you going to go to the meeting for that now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the next person probably doesn't need much introduction. You see the signs, you see his commercials. If you're going to see today, the man. The man. in Pennsylvania. Many of us in this room, me included, we voted. And we voted for a senator that did us wrong. But we're going to correct that this next three weeks from now. We're going to send somebody that's going to do the job. And the man for that job, who's a great guy, a small businessman like many of you and I in the room, was a congressman before, he knows what it is to make a payroll. Let's send somebody to Washington that knows what they have to do. Please give a warm Bucks County welcome to our one and only soon to be Senator Pat Kelly. that we could be having, that we should be having, 
Mm -hmm. That we will be having once this period passes. But they're doing some serious damage. If you think of what we've witnessed in just the last 18 months or so, serial bailouts of bailing companies, nationalizing whole industries, spending money on a scale we've never seen before, deficits and debt that are completely unsustainable. You add in cap and trade and card check and government run health care. Is it any wonder we haven't had an economic recovery? Is it any wonder we don't have job growth? I mean, how hard is this to figure out? Now, of course, in, in my race, Joe Sestak and I present as clear a contrast as any two candidates in the country. Could it be more stark contrast? Because Joe Sestak has voted for all of this agenda, the whole thing. He supports 100% of it. And his only criticism has been that it doesn't go far enough. So he voted for that awful $800 billion stimulus bill, spending all kinds of money we don't have on things we don't need. Joe voted for that and argued it should have been a trillion dollars. How about that health care monstrosity? 2,000 pages of new rules and regulations and mandates, $2 trillion of spending, half a trillion dollars in tax increases. Joe says that voted for the bill, and in committee he voted for a version of the bill that would have allowed states to ban all private health insurance altogether, to make it illegal to offer private health insurance. Voted for cap and trade, this bill that's going to impose a huge new tax on our energy use, and he said it didn't go far enough. Even on national security issues, as shocking as it is, he's got some very, very liberal left-wing views. For instance, my own view, when we capture an enemy combatant, a foreign terrorist on foreign soil, trying to kill Americans, we give them a military trial and a military tribunal. <laughs>
we just got to remember what God has done. And we went from being a third world colonial backwater to the greatest, richest, most successful, and prosperous country in the history of the world. We didn't do it by expecting the government to do it for us. We did it because we believed in ourselves and our communities and each other. If we restore those fundamental principles, our future is going to be very bright. For starters, there's a few simple things we need to do. Number one, we got to make the 2003 tax cuts permanent and not have a huge tax cut. The a second thing we got to do is clear away the threats of all of these, these excessive, wildly over-the-top regulations. I'm talking about cap and trade and card check and the implementation of these health care bills, the stuff that's having this chilling effect. Let's just clear that away. And I think we can do that. And the third thing we got to do is we got to get spending under control. This isn't rocket science. You can't borrow and spend your way to prosperity. If we restore some discipline on the spending side and get this deficit under control, then I am convinced this economy is going to take off. You know, one of the striking things about this amazing country that the rest of the world calls America, and we get to call home that every single generation of Americans has worked hard and has turned over to their kids an even greater country than the one they grew up in. It's been true. From the, there are no exceptions from the very beginning of this country. That's been the story. And so every generation of Americans has grown up with a wonderful country and the reasonable expectations that their kids would lead an even better life than they had. If we stay on the path that these guys have us on in Washington, we could become the first generation of Americans that would hand over to our kids a diminished country. One of fewer opportunities, one of less hope and less prosperity. Folks, we cannot let that happen. So we're not going to let that happen. Preventing that from happening and putting us back on the road to prosperity starts right here. It starts with the work that we're going to do over these next 19 days. It starts with the election that we're going to have on November 2nd. I, I'm very confident. I think we've got the wind in our sails. I think the momentum is on our side. But folks, we can't be complacent here. The other side has not gone away. The Democratic Senate Committee has spent more money attacking me than any other candidate in the United States of America. And they're still at it. So we've got to respond. And we've got to win on the ground. We've got to win. I've got to ask you to do one thing. And this, I think, could make all the difference in this election. I really do. And that is, if you haven't already, go to my website. Go to my website and sign up and give us your email address. And we will send you periodic updates from the campaign. We'll send you articles and new polls and videos and interesting stuff. But what I really want you to do is then blast that out to your list. Because you've got a circle of influence. You've got a group of family and friends and neighbors and coworkers, people who know you and they trust you. And they know you care about this country and you care about this future. And so if you endorse my campaign that way and you reach out to them and help me spread my message, I'll reach people that I could never reach any other way. And in the process, you can make all the difference. You could win this election for us. So please, I know you've done a lot already, but I want to ask you to hang in there. I will keep working as hard as I can every day until the polls close at 8 o'clock on November 2nd. Because the future of our country is what's at stake. I need your help to get this done. I'm very grateful for the help you've given me. And I want to leave you with this one last thought, that is, I believe with all my heart that it's our birthright as Americans to dream great dreams. It's the responsibility of elected officials to preserve and defend the freedom that allows us to live those dreams. Thank you very much.